In the last video, we implemented the dropping behavior for the depot and the delivery method for the drone that we're using a finite state machine to model. So now in this video, we're going to implement the dropping off behavior or state and the avoidance state to avoid walls and stuff. I'm super excited to get into it. This is kind of the bread and butter of finite state machines. This is where you go, where things get nice and juicy, and it's where they're actually good. Because up to this point, you probably could have used an if statement pretty easily. So let's get right into it. So it's time for droppage action. Let's go back into our drone script. I'm actually going to get rid of the depot script just to clean things up. And we're going to create our dropping off behavior. I keep on saying behavior. Behavior and state, you know, same thing. A state dot dropping off. And in here, what we need to do is basically just like create, make the base or make the drone base part like uncollidable. And collide off, make it a little bit transparent for visual feedback. And then once it's gone, once the package is like off of the drone, we just return back to home base. You get another one because that's all this drone is good for going back and forth. So let's do that. It'll be pretty easy. So we're going to say base dot can collide equals false. And we're going to say base dot transparency equals 0 0.5, make it sort of translucent. And then after this, we're going to say if not package. Then we're going to reset the transparency and stuff. So can collide is going to be true. Base dot transparency is going to be zero once again, perfectly opaque. And then we're going to say current state equals state dot returning. There we go. So this will just, you know, open up the part until the package is gone and dropped off. It falls through the part and then it goes out of the range of a little sphere detection we have up here. And then it's going to return. But right now, dropping off is never really triggered. So we need to go back to the delivering state and add another branch to our little if statement. So actually, we're going to do it inside of this if statement here, nested if statements. I know it's gross, but it's fine for now. You can always use guard clauses if you don't like it by making a premature return. But I'm fine with it. It's not that bad. Let's get into it. So we're going to say if the target pose minus drone get pivot dot position. So basically the vector from the drone, like a drone's actual position as target position, we say dot magnitude is less than two. So if it's within two studs, if the drone is within two studs of its target, we're going to drop off that part. So we're going to say current state equals state dot dropping off. Now you could obviously make this two more precise, like do a one or even a 0.5. But, you know, it's always good to leave a little bit of leeway because if you check to see if the target pose is equal to the drone get pivot dot position, it won't really work because there's a lot of, you know, quote ambiguity going on. So like, the numbers may not exactly line up either, more or less. But this should work. Fine, so let's try it out. We pick up our part. Boom. We fly away to our target position. Looking nice, looking nice. Now once we get there, it should drop off and then it come back. It drops, solidifies, and it comes back. Perfect. Now we have delivered our first package successfully. Which is which is nice. Nice. I appreciate it. So the package, you know, goes back. And we do the same thing. Cool, cool, cool. But what if there's a wall? Take care of the wall. We're even gonna anchor this wall. It's gonna be immovable and impenetrable. What shall we do? Here we go. Boom. The wall. Now obviously, this poor little drone is not going to be able to pass this wall. It's not programmed to do that yet. Also, why is it stopping? It's kind of weird. One sec. Yeah, 
There you go. I don't know why I didn't do it. But the wall stops. Not good. So, you know, drones, you know, they, they can fly, right? So we're going to make the height of the drone a little bit higher to try to avoid obstacles. And that's going to be the avoiding behavior. So down here, we're going to make it ahead of after delivering, but before dropping off, because this will usually happen while you're delivering. We're going to say function state dot avoiding. And the tricky thing about the avoiding behavior state behavior is the same thing. Um, is that we need to check if it's blocked. So let's do that. Right next to the get package function, we're going to make a local function is blocked. Check if the path of the drone is blocked. So we're going to say local flat direction equals mover dot position minus drone get pivot dot position dot unit. So we're going to start off with a direction. So we take the target goal position of the drone minus its current position. We get the unit vector of that. But the thing about this is when we are trying to avoid the obstacle by moving up, the, we're actually going to set them. Actually, let's do that now. We're going to set the mover type position. So in state of avoiding, we're going to say, we're going to say mover dot position equals drone get pivot dot position plus vector three dot y axis times five. So every tick while we are blocked, we're going to move up by five studs in the y direction. So the mover dot position is going to be set to above us. But keep in mind the package is also on top of us. So it would just feel like it's blocked for infinity if we didn't actually flatten out this direction. Flattening a vector, by flattening, I mean getting rid of the y component, is pretty easy. So all we do is say vector 3, we multiply it by vector 3 dot new 1, 0, 1. So we keep the x, we delete the y by multiplying by 0, any number multiplied by 0, 0, obviously, and we multiply it by 1 once again. And one more thing we need to do here is to give it some, you know, length. We're going to say multiplying it by 5. So it's a it'll be we'll make a ray that's cast you know five studs to where you're going. So we're gonna say local cast equals workspace ray cast drone get pivot dot position to the flat flat direction. There we go. So we flatten out the direction where it's going. We cast a ray from where it is to where it's going. The direction and then what we need to do to check if it's blocked is just to make it a little bit more canonical let's say since is blocked should return a boolean we're going to say return if cast and cast dot instance then true else false so this is kind of redundant but if you want to keep your types all in line I know I'm not using type checking right now, but I think it's a good practice to get into. We could obviously just say cast and cast an instance because it'll basically say if there is a part in front of you, then then like say that you're blocked blocked. But actually this will probably only work for parts, it may not work for drain. Optionally remove the and cast instance. I don't really know. I only test it on parts. You can test it for yourself. But um this will return like the cast itself. That's kind of extra baggage for is blocked function. We kind of only want true or false. So we just say, we use this little if else expression here to say, you know, if the cast exists, then we give it true, else false. Redundant, but at the same time, more clear. And I would rather have something that's more clear to the reader than have something that's, you know, an extra couple letters. So now in our avoiding state, all we have to do is say if not is blocked. So if it's not blocked, then we set the current state equal to state dot delivering. Making sure to get rid of the parentheses. But right now the avoiding state is never triggered. 
when would we ever trigger the block state? Well, that'd be while we're delivering or returning. So, in the delivering, we're gonna start with that. Below the target pose, kind of like detecting for drop off, we're gonna say if is blocked, then right state equals state dot avoiding. Boom. So if we're blocked, then we avoid the blockage. Once we avoid the blockage, we go and deliver. And then up here, in the returning, we basically say if is blocked, then current state equals state dot avoiding. Boom. There we go. So I think you could also do this as an else if. Doesn't really matter. If it's blocked, we'll avoid it. And the beauty of, okay, this is where the beauty of state machines really comes in. So think about it. If we're avoiding, we set to state.delivering. What if we're returning? Like, what if we're already returning and then we have to avoid as well? Well, it'll set you to delivering. Then once you're delivering, it'll say, oh, there's no package. So we go to returning. So it handles the extra logic. This avoiding doesn't have to know whether or not you're returning or delivering. It'll just automatically default to delivering. And if delivering says, oh no, we're actually not delivering, then we'll go and return it. Same thing with this. Um, same thing with returning. I think you could also do it the other way around by saying that it's returning. It'll detect the package and immediately go to delivering. So it handles the state changes. It handles that sort of change in state automatically, which is absolutely wonderful. So all that's left is to test it out. So we pick up the part. We go away. Also, you can see it kind of raising over there. I think it was like, must have been detecting the little small part there. So then we scale the wall and we deliver the part successfully. Absolutely wonderful. And then once we're returning, it'll do the exact same thing. Scale the wall and then laser back the position. Uh, I might, might detect that little part there. Who knew? Yeah, it did. Whatever. The cool thing is, it automatically do, goes back to the returning state, which is absolutely wonderful. Oh yeah, so that's about it. This is finite state machines in a nutshell, the most basic form of pushdown automata, and it's absolutely wonderful. This example did not include the best practices for making a game, but it did include the best practices, for at least my opinion, making a FSM finite state machine in Roblox really easily. This is the basics for any AI. I've been doing a lot of like robotics programming recently, making autonomous robots, and these are found galore in them, and they're absolutely wonderful, and they handle a lot of state changes really nicely. I'm really into this sort of thing, so you may see more like you know AI type videos progressing in the universe of pushdown automata. This is a nice little ease back into video recording because I haven't done a video in. I don't want to say how many months because it's been a long time, but it's great. So I hope you really enjoyed it. This is something I'm really passionate about. Let me know if it's good, if it's bad. I know some stuff was a little buggy and error prone, but you know, that's not the point. The point is state machines. State machines are great. I'll leave you with that. So like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Comment, questions, suggestions, queries, hello. I hope you have a nice day, and goodbye.